Hey guys, it's Ross Scott, and on the Space Coach State, we're going to take a look at the patrons of the lodge on Vandor from the Solo Official Guide. And here is their spread. Lots of different types of aliens and humanoids. So let's check out what it says about them. Many visitors to the lodge find themselves at a literal and figurative crossroads with a spaceport and import impound lot just down the mountain path. The lodge provides daring and desperate travellers with a dangerous mix of business and pleasure. So the first one we'll look at is Ayothene Jacontro, who is this person here. So let's see what it says. Climber's mask with oxygen concentrators, you see here. Big Game Hunter Jacontro is part of a crew who are convinced Vandor's mountains conceal a living bastardon. Despite losing an arm to gangrene after exposure to the elements, this Carestian trapper returns to Vandor each year. He is willing to brave the wilderness for what many at the lodge regard as a fool's quest. Next we have Naily Freefa, this lady here. So let's see what it says about her. Right, I think it's her tattoo, but it's a stylized depiction of a hyperspace simu-tunnel. So if you can just see the patterns on here, specifically that dot there, very nice patterning on her arms as well. So let's just see what it says about her. Multi-talented Freefa is rarely short of work. As an outlaw tech, she makes illegal modifications or repairs to starships and equipment. She is also a skilled tattoo artist, adept at inking both gang symbols and data carrying electro tattoos. I think that's the ones that Afra must have as electro carrying tattoos, the ones on her arm that go up like that. Next, we're going to have a look at Rala Kili, who is this person here. He's got a spare protocol droid hand here. Don't tell 3PO. And what does he have here? Owner units can remotely give droids a zap of electronic pain. Very similar, of course, to what we see on Kessel. Now, Ralakili, a loathsome rascal who runs the droid fighting pits in the lodge. Ah, now it makes sense. Ralakili has hated droids since his planet was ravaged by General Grievous during the Clone Wars. That's interesting. I wonder if he's even turned up in the Clone Wars as a very minor character. Next, we're going to have a look at Fugas. No, we're going to have a look at Sansesia Crete. This lady here. And again, this restraining bolt for droids she has on her strap there. Crete is a trainer in the underground droid fighting circuit and an adept codebreaker. She is hired to bypass safety protocols on droids and turn the machines into unwitting assassins. Now we will have a look at Fugas Fandita. This one here. Mighty incisors, the teeth are up here. This looks like a variant on a Mon Cala design, doesn't it? Let's see what this is. Is it a cup of some kind? Cup of imitation jury juice. And he has insulated and grounded electro work coveralls, which obviously is what he's wearing here. So let's see what it says about him. Fandita is an iridium miner employed by the Galactic Mining Guild. His mole like gotterite heritage makes him well suited for working long hours in low light conditions. He and his co worker spend their time off in the lodger's bar. And next we have Trega, this person here. And he's got a portable translator comp, which is this. Now let's see what it says about this. A copy skin outfit. And if you look at it, the fringing on here, it does remind me very much of those early trappers in North America who took some of the styling from the Native American tribes. So it says, Trega is a chakrut smuggler from Oslompex 5, who claims to have an innate sense for profitable deals. The sensation is really a side effect of a malfunctioning brain implant. 
So I guess it's like Lobot gone bad. Now next we have Astrid Fenris. And she has a Mandalorian style bob haircut, similar I suppose to Sabine Wren. Now let's see what this says here. Synth hide capelet with concealed pockets. And she's got a Prax Arms Aphidiac 350 Heavy Blaster Pistol. And it looks like she's got the blood stripe as well on her trousers. So let's see what it says. A smuggler from Yer Tanji, Fenris pilots a modified YT2400 freighter called the Silver Hal. I do believe that's the same model that was Dash Rendars in Legends and the Iron Squadron have in Season 3 of Star Wars Rebels. Her current scam involves exporting relatively worthless Vandor ice and passing it off as expensive Ra'ala mineral water. She sells it to gullible customers who believe in the water's promised rejuvenating effects. Astrid insists this is only a short-term scheme to help her settle some debts. And next we're going to have a look at Tordich Envlo, this one here. So let's see what it says. Emergency vac suit provides some insulation, which will be for this. And then here we see jacket purchased locally at great cost. And he has her hermetically sealed reactor gloves. But he basically looks like he's wearing an Ewok suit. <laughs> so maybe it is Ewok fur. Who knows? It does look like some kind of very loose fitting onesie. So what it says about him. Shivering Envlo is a mechanic aboard an independent freighter who hopes his captain finds work on a warmer planet soon. For now, this near human has engulfed his body in a dense cod yuck fur coat. So there you go, guys. That is just our look at the various Lodge patrons that we see on Vandor in the background. I cannot say I really recall actually seeing any of them in the film, but I've only seen it once, and you know it's like the first time you see any Star Wars movie. It's a roller coaster, you miss at least half of the stuff. But for now, that is just a look at the patron, the patrons of the Lodge. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or a suggestion what kind of topic you'd like to see discussed, or like the video.